Hi, my name is Barbara Wainwright. I'm the founder of Wainwright Global Institute of Professional Coaching, and I'm here with Coach Larry, and I'm excited to introduce you to him. He's an author in our latest book release, which is The Power of Life Coaching, Volume 2, Manifesting Transformation in Financial, Professional, Emotional, Spiritual, Wellness, and Relationship Aspects. Welcome, Larry. Hey, how you doing? Great, thanks. It's really nice to have you here. So Larry, you want to share with us a little bit about your background so we can get to know you better? Um, sure. Well, you know, born and bred in Detroit, Michigan. Um, been here pretty much all my life. Um, started up, had some ups and downs, some challenges, as I'm sure most people have had. Um, but what I found is through the trial and error, I was able to, I guess, find a peace with those things. And from those things, my willingness to share them has allowed me to, I guess, become what I would call relatable to others. And as a result, we've been able to, I guess, make some inroads in regards to the healing process for our respective lives. Oh, that's really beautiful. I know you had some serious losses uh, over the last year, and um, I know that that can be really difficult to get through. And I know that you were a huge support for the family when that happened. Do you want to just share a little bit about that? Oh, sure. Um, well, you know, uh, I guess I'm not, um, I guess, a, I'm not unfamiliar with tragedy. Um, I lost my mother when I was five. Um, I lost my first daughter at the age of three to a drunk driver oh. when I was, oh, geez, what was I, about maybe 21 at the time. And, you know, friends, family, and others um, throughout the years. Um, and as much as it was painful, it was also the thing that made me become who I am. And as I've grown and, you know, walked my journey, I've found that I've been perhaps um, an assistance to others that have gone through similar type of situations. And as a result, it's given me, I guess, more um, ammunition to put in my arsenal for my own healing process. And so I've learned to not look at it as something that has hindered me in my journey, but something that has just been a part of my journey. And it was my job and responsibility to learn how to deal and manage that said journey. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's really powerful. And uh, I, I just, uh, my heart goes out to you for all the loss that you've experienced. And I can't really imagine what it would be like to use, lose a child like that. That would be so difficult. To well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I could say the same thing to others that may have lost someone due to cancer or an illness, um, to someone who had to watch their loved one go through the process of, of Alzheimer's and, and losing themselves. So although I may not know someone's exact hurt, I do understand hurt. Yeah. And we allow ourselves to just build from that base, then we have a relatability in which case we can have empathy for each other. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for when you talk about the healing process, empathy more than anything else. Not so much a, a sane um, hurt, but an understanding that I am hurting. Yes, I think that's very true. Empathy is really important uh, when you're going through something like that. Yeah, I agree. Wow. So, Larry, tell me, what made you decide to become a coach? Well, you know, um, because of the things that I mentioned earlier, um, I became a lot more, I guess, um, open in sharing my stories um, with individuals, whether they were complete strangers or just people who had come to me um, asking for advice in general. Um, but over the years, I discovered that advice is just something you give and you not, you're not in a controlled situation to whereas the person may be in the understanding that it's their responsibility to do something to create the change in their life. So if you're just out here giving advice to someone, you have no set parameters um, to where the expectation level has been set and agreed upon. And so then they're liable to come back to you asking for more advice and now you're enabling them. And that's something that I realized wasn't the life I wanted. So when someone mentioned to me that they thought I could be a good coach because in giving advice, I would often ask, well, what are they willing to do? 
I investigated the process of becoming a coach and realized it's something that I could definitely put my heart and soul into because I wanted individuals to win at their journey um, as opposed to just circling around and around repeating the cycle um, because they thought perhaps the change that they were looking for was from an external source. Oh, that's really well put. Really well put. Yeah, people don't usually change unless they have somebody there holding them accountable to making that change. Right? Yeah. Okay, so tell me what difference has coaching made in your life? Oh, well, um, I think the first um, thing I had to realize is that I was in need of coaching myself. <laughs> um, and as I went through the process of learning, how to become a, I guess, a certified coach. Um, my first uh, client or candidate or guinea pig was myself um, to start the process of self-coaching. Um, the reason I thought that was important was for the simple fact in coaching, I believe it's supposed to be a termed experience, meaning there's a goal, we help um, someone reach their goal, and then depending upon their decision to either set a new goal and choose you as someone to help and hold you know, help them be accountable to that goal, they are out there on their own. And if they learn the process of self-coaching, they would increase their chances of success. So I thought, hey, if I could figure that out or find ways or things that I needed to notice about myself in the process or of learning how to self-coach, I would then be able to explain clearly to someone else the advantage of not looking for someone to just give them advice, but instead seeking their own answers and their own reality so that they can create that reality and then live a fulfilled life. Oh, that was really well said again. Beautiful. <laughs> so um, it seems like you have created a huge impact with your coaching in other people's lives. Is there anyone that you can think about you'd like to share a coaching story anonymously? Oh, well, sure. There's an interesting story, one that I share often with people. Um, I'm also a graphic designer and printer. So as a result, I'm in a unique position because I have families that come to me oftentimes for funeral programs. And in this particular case, the young lady came to me and she was very distraught because, as you can imagine, it's a very um, stressful you know, situation to be in when you lose a loved one. And more importantly, when you're not properly prepared and now you're in a position to where you have to facilitate the, the final you know, resting of that loved one. And in talking to her, I realized due to her stress, she was lashing out. Um, talking to her a little more, she was willing to confide and say that it wasn't necessarily what she wanted to do. It's just what she, it's what she was used to doing. But because it was her mother that passed, she was looking to take on the mantle that her mother served in the family, the leader, the provider, the support system. And she was very afraid. So we talked, although we were short in our relationship, um, she actually came back to visit the office on occasion, want to update me about the family, but more so just to get a better understanding of what she could do in the position she now found herself in. And we went through a couple of questions and answer sessions. And what we came to realize is that she didn't necessarily have to be her mother. She just had to be herself and use what her mother taught her to be the best version of herself she could possibly be at that moment. And if she was to grow and become even stronger or more proficient in her abilities, then that would just mean she changed. So we had to just come to the terms or realization that change was okay, which allowed her also to come to terms with the passing of her mother. Change, change. was the most important thing we had to accept and realize and know that it wasn't a bad thing necessarily because although bad things happen, we still can make good out of them. And the good from her situation, from her lips, was that she was growing into a new woman that she didn't know she could become because she had her mother up until that time. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a great story about uh, significant accepting change and being in that difficult situation. And, um, you know, she's really blessed to have you as a coach. That's what I think. <laughs> Oh, gosh. So who is your ideal client, Larry? 
My ideal client, I believe, is someone that is open to finding answers as opposed to the answer. Someone that has taken on the idea or the belief that finding one answer would be limiting and also it would be perhaps very frustrating because you would then have to go through a multitude of scenarios in order to find the one thing you set it on. But again, taking on the idea of change, what happens if you believe today is the day you find your answer only to become a new person in a month and then need a new answer? So as a result, I'm looking for the client that is open to the possibilities, open to becoming more than what they are today, but being content with who they are at the moment. So that person would come in knowing that they're seeking answers, they're looking to do the work, and more importantly, they're willing to be okay with the trial and errors of doing that work because the journey is where they actually find their answers, not so much the destination. Oh, I love that. <laughs> this has been a great interview. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my gosh. So what would be your call to action? How would you like a, a client to reach out to you? What would be the best way? Well, to reach me, um, once we reactivate the website, um, it would be at uh, interlinkliving.com or coachlarry.com. Um, I can be reached at also my phone number, which is 313-887-9164. Um, email is coaching at the, T-H-E hyphen, I-N-N-E-R hyphen, L-I-N-K dot com. So that's coaching at the dash inner dash link dot com. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes, let's say coaching at the hyphen inner hyphen link dot com. Got it. <laughs> Great. All right. So do you have any last comments or things you'd like to share with our audience before we go? Well, um, to anyone that is interested or may have thought about seeking someone to assist them in their journey and finding a coach. I would say be open to the possibility. I know a lot of times there are some misconceptions in regards to what coaching actually is. And so it kind of puts us in that same slot that I believe multi-level marketing exists in. It does work if you work it. Um, <laughs> it right? works yeah. if you work it. But I think what happens is an individual thinks that the work or the onus is the responsibility of the coach when actually it's the quite opposite. The responsibility is the one being coached, that they have to be willing to do the work. So you can't be afraid of the trial and error of this thing. I know you're looking for your answer, but it's just a decision away. You just have to be willing to find someone that will walk with you and remind you that in your moment of weakness, you're as strong as you need to be to keep going. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Larry, for this interview and your time. It's been really, really good. And um, I look forward to sharing this with our community. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Thanks.